What's up, everybody? It's your girl, KT and Gabby. And welcome to Building Our Power. Today's episode, we're going to be talking a little bit about how capitalism is killing us. Uh, me and Gabby, we're going over some statistics, and we're just going to provide you some statistics, and we'll just have a conversation surrounding that. So, uh, Gabby, let's start off. What I would like to start talking about, really, is... Um, the life expectancy for Americans based on race, the difference between the lowest and the highest. So um, as, as far as we know, the life expectancy for African Americans or black Americans uh, is extremely low in comparison to the highest, the highest being Asian Americans. Uh, Gabby, why do you think why do you think black Americans live? Uh, a, a shorter period of time than Asian Americans? Well, we'll have to go through all the statistics to kind of start breaking things down, but there's definitely correlations in certain factors. A lot of black people live in the South, and statistically, Americans living in the South lead shorter lives. So there's that. And then the fact that... Um, a lot of black people live in poverty, and we know there's a correlation between poverty and life expectancy. I found a statistic which was incredible that pretty much mapped out uh, people's income level to their life expectancy all across the board. The biggest um, gap, I'd say, in life expectancy was probably in Washington, D.C. There was a gap of 10 years mm. from the poorest to the uh, richest. The poor, the richest people in Washington, D.C. live 10 years longer than the poorest people. In uh, Tennessee, there's an eight-year um, difference. The poorest life expectancy is 78. The richest is 86. So, I mean, it's literally just a cum accumulation of all the worst uh, factors in life that just kind of crumbles up together. And, of course, African Americans and Native Americans are going to have uh, the lowest life expectancy in um, in America. You know, uh, some people would think that the high, because like when we first, when I first read that, my thought was that white Americans, white male Americans, would be the ones who, with the highest uh, life expectancy. But the statistic is basically saying that Asian Americans have the highest uh, life expectancy. Why do you think? Why do you think Asian Americans over white Americans have a higher life expectancy? Even even Latino Americans have a higher one than white Americans. And to me, like you you look at uh, I don't know. You just look at everything else in this world, and it says that white men are going to be at the top. So automatically, we just think that they would live live the longest, right? Um, I think it has to do with, um, there's still a lot of, well, there's a lot of white rich people. There's a lot of white poor people. Mm. And you have to take that into account. And when we think about, you know, of course, the immigration process in America, America only lets, like, the wealthy people come in regardless. And so the Asian Americans and the people of other nationalities that are being able to come into America, they already have money. So they can, they can already have access to good health care. They're not having to work these back-breaking jobs in the coal mines and stuff like that. So they obviously are going to have a longer life expectancy, which is why I also think that the African-American life expectancy has been inflated as well because it's, it's counting everybody, right. immigrant, uh, blacks, and everybody. And we know if we just count in the black folks that's been here forever, I assure you it's probably way worse than what we think it is. Mm. So there was a, another statistic that we looked at in regards to, um, like, who, who really lives the longest? Who lives the longest, okay? And apparently in the entire United States, um, it's, Hawaii. it's Hawaii. It's women in Hawaii. And what, what did they say? I think it was, like, 80-something they lived to, uh, like, upper 80s, where – I just think why, like, what's why? Why would like, why would women in Hawaii live the longest? And then I have to think, like, obviously, co uh, co colonization has happened there, but they're kind of like disconnected from the U.S. Yeah. in the sense that, 
like, I don't know. I just think, like, it's obvious colonization is there, but at the same time, it's like, well, they're disconnected from the U.S., so they're obviously going to have uh, different things that are happening, just like every other state. You can tell the poorest states, the people with the majority black people are the ones that are going to have, like, the lower expectancy of life. And Hawaii has the highest. I don't know. What do you think about I that? I think it's just not having to deal with as many uh, white people, to be honest, because we already know racism is a stressor as well. And, you know, even though there's plenty of white people there, you know, through tourism and stuff like that, I feel like they still kind of have uh, at least a little more autonomy than black folks in Mississippi. Yeah. Which, mm -hmm. even though more a lot majority of like the black folks is concentrated in like Mississippi, Georgia, Alabama, they still do not have very much um, political power, and they're still having to deal with just overt racism. So that's my little uh, hypothesis. It's not uh, rooted in any science, but it's just what I think. I think white people uh, contribute to uh, lower. Um, life expectancy. I agree uh, to that. <laughs> what about the, uh, what about the, because we did also read apparently that uh, heart disease is the highest killer in the U.S. And personally, I don't know about you, Gary, but personally, I feel like that has a lot to do with stress. It has a lot to do with the fact that Americans live paycheck to paycheck, which is stressful, Americans don't have access to health care, which is stressful when you are in pain all the time. Uh, Americans don't have access to adequate food. Americans don't have access to a lot of things. Uh, I mean, majority of Americans are dying at early ages, right? So that's got to add even more stress to their lives. And it's just, I mean, it totally makes sense why heart disease would be the number one killer because we... We're so stressed out. We're literally so stressed out every moment of every life. So let's add on to, because you're talking about, like, Americans in general. Right. So more than, like, just white people. Oh. But let's add, let's add on another layer. Let's add on being black and being a woman right. and being in the South. Do we see now why the life expectancy is so low for African Americans there in the South? And... Even in Washington, D.C., which is, uh, it's in the north, but their wealth distribution and their life expectancy gap is just astronomical. But just think of the stresses of being poor, like you said, black, a woman having to deal with racism, sexism, uh, capitalism, other isms, fat phobia, whatever. Of course, it's going to take a toll on your heart. And when you look at what they say contributes to heart disease, it's all the same things. And it's all things that are directly directly connected to capitalism. So what are some things that uh, okay. causes heart disease? So according to this, okay, we know age, we know sex. You can't do anything about that, family history. Uh, smoking, we know... Um, for our generation, we're really not that big on smoking, but the younger generation is, and the generation before us, they literally were marketed cigarettes their whole life mm -hmm. in TV. This is good. This is good. Doctors like it. So capitalism literally made our uh, grandma and them nicotine addicted. Um, poor diet, a diet that's high in fat, salt, sugar. Okay, we talked about this. Processed foods. Why are more Americans eating processed foods? Ooh, tell them. Tell them, because this is important. Why are more Americans eating processed foods? Like, even for myself, I'm a vegetarian, but I'm not eating uh, celery and making fresh salads every day. Why? I don't have the time. I don't have the energy. I don't have the money, and it's not going to last me that long and keep me full all day. And, and think about this. Why do, we, why do you not have the time? Why do you not have the energy? It's because you're working. You're literally working. In, it's in because society. I'm working like, and I have other things. Like I'm working and then I want to also be able to work out and I want to also be able to sit down on my butt for two two <laughs> minutes before it's time to go to bed. Yeah, like, so they're literally the way that the work day is set up. You can't be able to work and cook, and if you had kids, oh. raise your kids and be able to sit down for a second. You literally have to pick and choose. And then with money, 
It costs money to eat healthy. It costs money to go to Whole Foods. It costs money to get fruits and vegetables and eat them up real fast and have to go back to the grocery store three days later and get some more. It costs money. Um, high blood pressure. I was looking that up. Causes of high blood pressure. It's the same stuff. Smoking. Lack of physical activity, which takes time. So either you're going to eat good or you're going to work out or you're going to watch your kids. Or you're going to go to work. like, Or you're going to go to work. Too much salt in the diet that goes with the processed food. Too much alcohol consumption. Why are people drinking? So why are our folks alcoholics? We, we know why. We know why. We don't have access to health care. So how else are we going to cope? Weed and alcohol. The uh, weed, alcohol, pills, like that's what we know. That's what people know. They don't know. Uh, they don't know healthy coping mechanisms because we don't have access to healthcare, so that people can go to freaking therapists. Okay, anyway. And it's cheaper to get a bottle of wine than go to a therapist. Um, stress. I went to a. I'm a teacher, and they're trying to. They're going to force us to go back to school this week. Uh, they made us take a two-day little class on uh, coping with stress of being a teacher and the trauma of being a teacher. And all they pretty much told us was, make sure you practice self-care. Not, we're going to give y'all mental health days. We're going to give you more help. We're going to be there to support you. We're going to set up rest areas. We're going to have massage therapists. Nothing. And that's for teachers. Imagine working in a warehouse. Imagine the people that work at Amazon. Them folks really don't care. Them folks don't even don't even give you the semblance of caring. A rest, a no, rest day. They didn't even give uh, people with Amazon. Remember, like Amazon people and uh, regular uh, quote unquote essential workers. Remember, they they wrote papers for us so that we could go back and forth to work. They um they literally just they made people go to work no matter what like it didn't care they didn't care that there was a pandemic they didn't care that people were tired and trying to figure out whether or not they were going to live through this pandemic they didn't care they did not care like at the end of the day so why are more people dying stress just long story short stress so we get stress so stress is caused by high blood pressure which or stress causes high blood pressure, which then causes heart disease. How is somebody in poverty with kids trying to cook healthy meals, trying to exercise, trying to work, trying to get time to rest, going to cope with stress? What time do they have for that? And even if they did, guess what? They don't have access to health care, guys. Physical they don't have access to health care. And, and then they say poor dental health, which we know – Health care, regular health care does not co- uh, cover dental insurance. So, literally, let's talk about this. Heart disease is a capitalist disease. It's, it's a result, a direct result of capitalism. Mm. If you ask me, they need to change heart disease to, to capitalism disease. Let's think about this. Let's, let's do a little thought experiment. If we lived in a society where everybody was able to work and everybody was able to have three days of rest, full three days of rest, everybody had food, nobody had to worry about where their clothes was coming from, nobody had to worry about where their bills was paid, they was able to go to the doctor when they needed to, they was able to get their teeth clean when they needed to. Do you think we'd have so many people dying of stress of of uh lack of physical act- inactivity, f- of poor dental health, of high blood pressure, we would not. So I want to say, so we know like America obviously is garbage in these things, but there was another statistic that you had brought up, Gabby, and it was about who's like number one in the longest life expectancy in the world, and it's Monaco at eighty nine point four years, second. Japan, what does Japan have, what does Monaco have outside of what the U.S. has? 
They have literally developed societies which provide them with socialist care. They have um, social, socialist programs that are going to help them long term. They have health care. They have dental care. They have, they have access to those things. When they throw people in jail, they have amazing jails, right? They have those type of things that's developed. Whereas we, we, we just think about, like, just think about how wonderful it would be if we had a system in which we did not have to beg for uh, societal, really just norms, societal norms, things that should be normal. I can't, I can't imagine it. And you know, people in the US, I've heard them be really, really racist um, and call like other countries, specifically black countries, uh, they call them third world countries, racist. Terrible thing to say, but I wanna say, I looked up the definition for that. I'm gonna read it to you guys. So it basically says that as a society, the term third world country refer refers to countries with high mortality rates, especially infant mortality rates. They also have an unstable and inconsistent economy. These are the country which massive amounts of poverty and in some cases have fewer, fewer natural resources than other nations. These countries also uh, lack economic stability because the lack of the functioning class system. Usually the country will have the upper class and a lower class. Without a middle class to fill the gap, there's almost no way for a person to escape poverty because there's no next step for them on the economic ladder. So what does this tell us? The U.S. is a third world country. The U.S. is 43rd in life expectancy. And the they U.S. Wanna, is a third world And they want to tell you that this is the best. So, pretty much we put all that de de uh, depressing facts in there because it's really to make a point. Because for myself personally, obviously, I'm a black person that lives in the South. And all of my family either lived in Tennessee or Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And all of my family on my mom's side is from Mississippi, which has some of the lowest life expectancy rates and I've seen that my great aunt just passed and she wasn't even 70 yet she was in her early 60s and so when I think about their lives and I think about everything they've had to go through when it comes to poverty when it comes to uh, lack of mental health services when it comes to lack of health care period or lack of adequate health care I just think about how America really has failed black people. I mean, we already know this, but just looking at those numbers, like you don't even realize that, yo, there is like this capitalism thing is killing us immediately when we talk about the police and stuff like that. We talk about how doctors don't want to listen to us, which I'm sure also contributes to our life expectancy, yeah. right? And then when we just think about just everything, environmental racism, some people in Memphis over there living directly by pollution plants where everybody has asthma, everybody's getting cancer early and dying at young ages. The water is polluted. So this capitalism thing cannot stand. It's killing us. And it's, allow it's making us not being able to, to fully live full productive lives and enjoy life because it it turns people into machines and it expects people to run like machines and and never you know give out but um i don't even know what we can only thing i can say is friends um there's hope because we're going to keep in uh educating everybody and we're going to keep putting the word out there to to show people, like with things with coronavirus and uh, the water crisis and stuff like that, again, that capitalism is not sustainable and will not work. And so we have to keep uh, even encouraging ourselves that there is a way out, but we have to be willing to fight and we have to be willing to, uh, you know, do all that stuff. There is hope. To make a long story short is what you're saying. There's hope. We don't need, uh, we have our morals and values and there, there's hope that one day, maybe in our life, that we will have access to these things. If we keep talking about it and we keep pushing 
the the thought forward. So yeah, that's pretty much yeah, it. Because that's Joe it. Biden ass ain't finna do it because because uh, he over here bombing people and we can't even yep. get a fifteen dollar minimum wage. So definitely, also we don't want y'all to vote. But all we can do is continue to help each other, continue to build our numbers up and build our power. Somebody said they wanted to leave the city because it was so bad. But I told them we cannot because there are people here still struggling. And we have to get that word out to them that we all collectively have an enormous amount of power and we can't give up. And so that's all we wanted to say, really. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you like this episode, make sure you share it with a friend. You can hit us up on our social medias at building our PWR. Hit KT up at KT underscore does art. And hit me up, Gabby, on Instagram at Gabbeats Music. Thank you again so much, guys, for your support. And uh, we're out.